Hello, this is Dr. Rafi Romano. I'm very happy to welcome you to our series of clinical tips. Today, our tip of the day will concentrate on lingual orthodontics and lingual orthodontics, which I do for many, many years. And uh, uh, published uh, uh, the recent book was published a few years ago, Lingual Aesthetic Orthodontics by Quintessence. And today, our tip number four is about intermaxillary elastics. Elastics, as we all know, is part of the orthodontic treatment. We need many times to put elastics from one arch to another in order to equalize midline, in order to apply vertical forces. We have to remember that the inner arch in lingual orthodontics is much smaller than the outer arch. Therefore, every elastic that goes from inner arch to inner arch is actually more short <coughs> and, and more vertical. We will see it in a minute. Now, the other aspect is technical. Many patients have difficulties in, in, in putting uh, elastic from the inner to the inner. So, if they have a lower buccal appliance, it makes it more easy to put the elastics. But if they have two lingual, we can many times put some button, as you will see here, we put some button on the outer part and this uh, allows us to put this class 2 uh, elastics between molar and uh, cuspid or lateral. Now I'll go back and see uh, the, the uh, angulation of these elastics. Now there is for every elastics few dimensions or few vectors. One vector is the horizontal vector. Many times we want to advance the lower uh, incisors and to uh, uh, retrocline the upper incisors or sometimes even to locate the mandible in a different location. Now, because the arches are very small, we have to go as front as possible in the upper arch, like the laterals, and as back as possible in the lower arch, like second molars, in order to angulate the elastics to be more horizontal versus vertical. If we want to have more vertical force, we can of course go from cuspid to premolar or cuspid to first molar. The second aspect will be the in and out vector. As you can see from these pictures, when we apply a force from the inner part of the tooth going to the outer part of the lower tooth, we create a rolling effect and the teeth can roll out while wearing the elastics. It's very important to uh, expect this phenomenon and first of all minimize the force that elastics apply. Second, choose the wires that we um, uh, use. We can engage rectangular wire which almost fill the slot in the upper arch and in the lower in order to avoid this rolling in or rolling out. The second um, um, uh, phenomenon is what happens when we open the mouth. We should look what is the way this patient is opening the mouth and what forces are created on the elastics. Many times, because the opening of the bite and the movement of the mandible is not symmetrical, we get a different strength, a different tension in the elastics and therefore we can create some uh, side effects by using these elastics. Very important to measure this and expect it. As you can see here, uh, you can see the angulation of the elastics, but not only the angulation, you can see how difficult it is to put the elastics on these lingual brackets. Uh, when you need to put elastics, it is uh, very useful to use brackets that has hooks or to put some kubiachis that create this um, uh, place where the patient can put the elastics. We can also use some uh, composite on the wire, as you can see here, and this composite help us to hold the elastics in place and not to slide on the wire. Uh, this is illustration that shows 
how the distance between the teeth can change if we go from the outside to the inside. I thank you very much and I'm looking forward to see you in our next tips of Dr. Romano uh, Clinic. Thank you.